morning, everyone, and welcome. Good to see all of you. Again, as usual, as you can see, uh, we're doing everything we can possibly to help um, as far as educating ourselves and helping you as well. Because again, the bottom line is, is we have Bottom a, line. Yes. Mike, can you see it now? I hope it uh, stands out. Hi, okay. Gene. Hi, hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Good to see and good to hear from all of you that giving feedback as well. You can go on the on the channel as well, uh, put comments and then again put comments too as well. You know if you're learning something. Remember, it's gonna a lot of things gonna sound contradict to what you believe. And remember, it's what you believe, not what God says. There's a difference. And the thing is, your beliefs coming from the lack of education. You didn't get enough education. Remember, we spoke before, and I've said this several times that. This is coming from Jewish ideology, and these people have thousands and millions, an unlimited amount of books they have at their disposal, okay? So they have a tremendous amount of books, okay? And they're reading, and this is where we all got our God from. This is what we know from Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. This is, this is what we all know about God from, from them. So they are the originator. They are the creator, if you will. Mm -hmm. You see? And everybody else just copied and took pieces from them. And may create their own religion. That's what everybody else has done. Every other religion has done. So again, we don't know what they know. But as we learn together, that you're going to discover what they know and see. And if you've been following, you notice there's a lot of things you did not know that you're like, wow, 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 wow. Because that's what happened to me. Wow, wow, wow. It took me a long time before I started to accept these new ideas, this new understanding, this new wisdom, this new knowledge. It took time because why? It went against what I believe. Yes, really. Yeah, it went yeah. against what I was taught. You know, it went, and, I, and the more I learned, I realized, hey, I don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, think about it. How can you argue someone, just to give you, again, they don't have no limit on the books. Imagine you argue with someone who have read 45, 50, 100,000 books. They spend their entire life from morning to sundown, sleeping two hours a day, reading these books. Now, what do you think you fit in that knowledge? Oh, yes. You don't. You don't. Mm -hmm. So you're just spitting out what you think and just making a fool of yourself. Because these people study. It's like going in front of a doctor who spent, what, 20 years, 30 years practicing, and you tell the doctor, ah, you know what? I don't believe what you're saying. You know, I know better. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the doctor say, Joe, what school did you graduate from? <laughs> oh, I didn't graduate school. I didn't yeah, believe. Yeah. Oh, hard just knocks. Believe. I graduated from school. Hard knocks. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And then you say, well, what university? No university. Did you graduate high school? Oh, I barely made yeah, it. Man. I barely made it. That was you know, me. Barely well, made it. And out. that's what people was. That's how people act, Joe, because they barely have an education. They may read uh, a piece of information here and there. All of a sudden, they think they are the authority of the subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you go to a lawyer if you know so much? Don't go to a lawyer. Mm -hmm. If you know so much, don't go to a doctor. Go. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But yet, the most difficult subject for everyone to understand and to relate to and the most difficult subject that you need to live in this world you don't want to learn but yet you think you know mm -hmm. exactly, exactly how is that possible and think about what i'm going to say next all your mistakes that has happened up to this point you are right now is because you didn't have this information and that includes me oh, my mistakes too. yeah exactly because exactly. we know Joe, we're talking about um and then joe gonna give you a good one about orchestra we're talking about when you were growing up, did your parents tell you about sex? Mm. They didn't talk to you about yeah, learning on your own. Yeah, like most most of us. Yeah, you 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 know say, hey, you gotta get married. This is how you do it. This is how you are in the bedroom. This is how you are with your wife. You with your husband. When to get married. When not to get married. How to raise children. Did they sit down and give you that kind of education? No, I didn't get that. No, right. I didn't get it either. All we did is watch. And if we learn anything about that, it was on television. In finance, too. Never knew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how is it that yeah. the most important thing we're going to do in our life, which is getting married, having children, and we have no education about that, no knowledge about that, not one thing. No, exactly. We're taught, Joe. Well, Victor, I think I mentioned about, uh, I brought up this woman named Helen Keller, I think a couple videos back on one of the very first. And I don't know if anybody... Uh, realize who that was so look that up Helen Keller she was a woman who was born she had no eyesight she couldn't hear and she couldn't speak either you know but she winds up after many years I don't know how old she was she winds up writing a book 
Now here, I have my eyes, my ears, I can talk and can speak, I mean, barely. And this woman writes a book and I don't, I can't even speak well. So what I'm trying to say is that she educated herself. And that's why if you're stuck somewhere and saying, whoa, whoa, is me, I don't have this, that guy, I don't have that. You know why? Because you haven't studied, you haven't learned, you haven't realized your potential. Find out what your potential is and you can achieve what you want. We talked about being rich. It's not so much about being rich in the money, but if you're whatever you want to be, you can achieve that. But you've got to find out your potential, Victor, and work on that. And it's not, that doesn't happen overnight. It takes years to do. And most of us are impatient. We want things now. Well, you know what? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But Beautiful, Joe. And he's right what Joe said about impatient. Well, Joe, did you become an adult overnight? No. 18 years. Did you graduate <laughs> Did you graduate high school overnight? No. <laughs> so, you know, having kids and they growing up, leaving the house, and then be able to retire did not happen overnight. If you notice, life required a long process. Not only a long process, but also information. Yeah, absolutely. You need information to make sure you go and think about it. You're investing so much time into a process, either marriage, children. Shouldn't it make, doesn't it make sense that you should have the right information if you're going to invest that much time in that particular area as a husband, as a wife, as a father, oh, yes, as absolutely. a mother? So we should, like you said, about education. So that means we should be educated in those areas extensively. Mm -hmm. So when we go to, out to become a husband, to become a wife, to become a mother, to become a father, we should know what we're doing. Exactly, even in our job. I mean, the more you know about your job, the better you're gonna be. Better you are, then uh, that can uh, progress you into another stage as far as like being just a salesperson to be, or a clerk to be a salesperson or a manager or an executor. You said everything requires training. It does. You have learning. To, you have to know. You have to know that knowledge. So there you go. An obligation. Who's the obligation? Is the obligation is your parents and you. Exactly. You have the parents have obligation to teach you, and you are obligated to learn. Well, Victor, you mentioned about the orchestra. Yes. Like yes, in yes. life, who is uh, you know, we have um, uh, in the orchestra. How many people are there? How many? Um, there might be 30, 20 people. And they, everyone has their own responsibility. Somebody might be playing the drums, the guitar, the bass, the cymbal, and they all have different positions. And who's the conductor of life? It's God. God is our conductor. We are the, uh, the people in the orchestra, and we have to perform every um, aspect that God has given us, the, uh, the obligation that he has given us to uh, perform position, yes. yeah. If we're uh, if whatever, if you're a mechanic, I mean, Victor, can you tune your own car up? Absolutely not. Well, why not? Wait, Joe, okay. you know what? <laughs> Yo, you're a teacher. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't teach. I can't even tune a car up, but I can build a house. So there there's go. my job. And that's the orchestra. That's the gift that God has given me. That's part of the orchestra. And then what happens if there's no drums in the orchestra? Well, something is off. Yes. So in our life, if we are missing something, then it's off. We have to rely on each and every one of us. Our ability, because each person is unique, have a different ability. And what Joe is saying is beautiful as far as the uh, orchestra, because if you notice, I'm not one of a fan or I follow it, but when you listen, the music is so well and beautifully put together. You know, like they say, uh, Mozart. Um, yeah, right. You know, when he wrote, I think, I, I forgot exactly, I'm not into, I'm not a musician, but when something is well put, like ladies, you can relate to this, about your parents cooking, your mother's cooking. When she uh, put all the right spice, ingredients, ingredients mm -hmm. the food tastes, mm, what if you forget salt? Right, no, that's going to be you, out. You were, right. um, yum, 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 mm -hmm. but it's missing something. You're missing something. Yeah, right. no, 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 think about it. That's like relationship. If it's missing something, you're going to eat it, but it's not going to taste And anything. then what is there? There's a recipe that you follow, ah. and that recipe is the laws, it's Ten Commandments. It's what God has given us. It's the recipe. We have to follow the recipe. There you go. That's beautiful, Joe. Again, like you said, the orchestra has a, a pattern. Everyone has their job to do. The, when your mother's cooking, when you're cooking, there's a recipe. There's a certain amount of um, to put in of each you know, um, ingredients for it to come out nicely. And that's what the Ten Commandment is. It's a recipe for your life. And Victor, sometimes I'm cooking and I'll go, well, I don't, I know how to do this. I don't have to look at the recipe. And sometimes I'll forget, like you say, the salt or whatever. 
something's missing, it's not right, so you got to follow the recipe of life. And don't forget, the conductor is God. Yes, the conductor is God. And the truth is, that is true. Even though you're cooking, you may forget to put something, some ingredients in there, and then what? And how do you know you miss something? Is either when you taste it or someone else, when you cook, you know, when you're serving it, and they're like, yeah, it's okay. Then someone has uh -huh. a feedback. What do they say? Well, it, it, it was missing something. Right. I don't know what it is, you know? So when you're in a relationship, guess what? That's exactly what's happening to you. And wait a minute, let me get back to the yeah. recipe too. What happens when you add more? You go, let me try a little bit of this, and you ruin it. So we shouldn't add, like they say, don't add in the Bible. Just, you know, follow the Ten Commandments. Follow what the Bible says, what the Torah says. Beautiful, Joe. That is absolutely because the Ten Commandments said do not add. Like you just said, you add more, you know, extra recipe, you could ruin it. You can ruin it, you, and see, you do. You and do. think about it. If God says do not add, to, you know, add to something, don't you think he knows he made it the best possible way it could be done? So if you add, he will take away what you're saying. Look, God, I appreciate how you did this creation. <laughs> But, but I think, but you miss you miss this part. This mm -hmm. part you didn't. You know, mm -hmm. For some reason you were sleeping. You can't say that again. Yeah, that's, that's what we're right. saying. For some reason you were sleeping, the food burned. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're telling God. You're telling He made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And think about it. Who are you to tell God He made a mistake? And then when you walk away from the stove, or walk away from God, then you burn your life. And there you go. And that is true. Uh, you burn your life. It goes on flame. Because why? you ignoring the structure that keeps you on track, and you deviate, and now you're wondering where all these headaches coming from, all these problems coming from. Well, a lot of it because God allowed the Satan to bring these problems into your life. Why? Then now you want to go back. Just like if you burn your hand on the stove, guess what? You're not going to do it again because you deviate. Hey, I told you don't put your hand on there. Exactly. But you didn't listen, and you put your hand, oh, okay, uh, now I'm not going to touch the stove anymore. You learn a lesson for life. And the gift that God has given you and us and me and you underestimate that never underestimate yourself whatever it is follow up on that i mean maybe you always wanted to be a poet or write a poem or play an instrument and remember ladies and do gentlemen, it do it just do it yes the what is the um to get back to what joe had said too rich the most perfect rich man or woman on the face of the planet i'm going to tell you the most perfect rich man and woman on the face of the planet is someone that has peace. There you go. Yes, it's not always about the money. It's when not you the money. say rich. It's, rich can mean many things. Exactly. Peace. Imagine someone doesn't worry about anything at all because he knows who's running the world, who has his back. Well, I've been rich all my life because I've had the greatest parents. My brother and sister, my friends. I mean, Victor, look at I mean, you're a great friend of mine. I mean... I'm blessed with that. Yes. And what would know, I trade? Mercedes or Victor? Well, wait a minute. Let me think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes that could be yeah. tempting. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Joe's right. Joe is a very, very good friend, a great friend. He reminded me of my previous friend. It's like Joe is a continuation of my oh, other friend you, I had Victor. before. And you know what? You know, the thing about to be able to recognize good people like I was able to recognize Joe, none of us is perfect, but Joe has a beautiful insight about him. What's beautiful about Joe is this. He has the ability to see people for who they are, and he fights for people. He fights for people right. He fights for people for fairness. You know, he fights for that. He doesn't like to see people, uh, the underdog, getting hurt. You know, I watched him carefully, and he really fights for people. Even if he doesn't know you, he'll fight for you. Thank you, Victor, for saying that. Oh, yes. it's true. Yeah. You I know? don't like injustice. That's yeah. the one thing I don't like. And God hates injustice. You see, so Joe is being like God. Hey, Joe, are you sure you're not God? <laughs> Because he hates injustice, and God hates injustice. Get off it? of me, Victor. <laughs> this is amazing. Hey, this is beautiful, and that's what I'm saying. We have to be like that. Right. The thing is, we have to look, like I said, for me as well, too. I'm learning from Joe. I'm learning okay? from you. Yeah, yeah, I'm learning because I'm learning. And I've said this before. Man, you should be like Joe. You know, we need to get to that point where we are educating like ourselves, like Joe has been doing, to become a better human being, to become a better version. Well, and Joe we are, been doing that. We are each other's teachers. Every yes, time we you are. run into something, there's a lesson to learn from someone or for you to teach them. There's yes. always there's always a, so if you run into a stranger, just think that God has brought you two together to there's a lesson to learn. Always look for that lesson, that sign. And Joe brought this up a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months, and he says this. He says to me, he said, Victor, isn't the Torah the Torah and everybody? 
Is it? Oh! Yeah, it is, it is. Yes, yeah. because each person has some truth of Torah in them. God has given us that instinct of what is righteous in Torah, the Ten Commandments. I think that instinct is in us. And then each person can display one part of the Ten Commandments or part of the Torah very hot, meaning that you see that in them because that's one area they love, they focus on, they're not, they don't know they're doing it, you know, but like, for example, just to use Joe, for example, he hates injustice, and I see that in him, so that part of the Torah is magnified in Joe, Joe really magnified this part of the Torah in him. And that's, that, that instinct in us is, we know that because when we do something, whatever it is, even speeding or uh, doing a, a, something against the Ten Commandments, you question, you go, oh, I know it's wrong, but uh, that's only a little bit. Nobody will know. We know. We have that instinct between what, right and wrong. Yes, we do. And now going to the topic for today is, should I marry a woman with children? And I have heard people, there's so much discussion on the internet. The problem with some of you or a lot of you who may be watching this video you're watching people who's giving you false information. Think about what I'm going to say. Why are you listening to people who haven't read 10,000 books, 40,000 books, 100,000 books? Why are you listening to these people? They don't know what they're talking about. What they're giving you a piece of truth out of a, a piece of truth out of a lot of lies. They're giving you a piece of truth out of a lies that goes against the word of God. That goes against the creator who designed you in a specific way to act and behave in a specific way. These people do not know the design of the creator, which is God, mm -hmm. how he designed us for us to function. And you are taking advice from these people. Well, Victor, what, you, what Victor's, I think, kind of trying to say, if I can say this, is that uh, about marrying someone with children, we don't know the, um, the attitude of someone. We all are looking for something out of someone. In a way, we're a little selfish, so... We have to be uh, aware of why we're getting married and why somebody's marrying us. Is it for prestige? Is it for the money? Is it for to take care of me and my children? This can go both ways. Yes. It's just not marrying a woman with children. It's marrying a man with children. There are a lot of men out there. And then the man was, oh, I need a woman to do this for my children, and which is not bad in itself. But we got to make sure why a person's, why you're marrying someone. Beautiful what Joe said, because if you watch the old Cowboys movie sometime, I remember they said um, maybe a, a man whose um, his wife died and he's looking for a wife to help him raise his children because he said, hey, these kids need a mother. So he mm -hmm. go out looking. So is that selfish? Is it because he needs help or because love or both or neither? Or well, is it just that he just want help? Well, finish? it's the wrong way to get married. You have to get married mostly because you you love your, the, woman, the, the individual. It's about love, and you want to take care of them. You want them to take care of you. Selfish is not bad in itself because, we, again, when we get married, we're always looking for something. What is this person going to do for me? You know, even if it's happiness. So, I mean, selfish isn't always bad. I mean, we look for that happiness. And you should be, yes. Right, exactly. Meaning that um, happiness is a byproduct of you doing what you're supposed to do. It's a byproduct. It's like um, if you eat healthy... The byproduct is you lose weight. Yeah, exactly. You lose weight. If you eat healthy, right. you lose weight. That's a byproduct, you know, and you become more healthier. So when you go in for love, the byproduct should be happiness. Mm -hmm. But when you go in for any other reason, the byproduct is going to be divorce, misery, fights, jail, anger, and even could lead to death. And that's, uh, you know, that means a lot when you say you get married for happiness. I mean, you, you do have, you want to be... Uh, Content. You want them to be in love. You want to need all that to be, have a happy marriage. Those are the byproducts yeah. by you doing what you're supposed to do. It's Beautiful. like a business. When you get in business with someone, you have a boss, you have a foreman, and everybody's got to work together to make it work. Like you were saying, mm -hmm. going back to the orchestra. Yeah, exactly. Going back to the orchestra. So if you have a marriage, a relationship, well, we say marriage because God doesn't say relationship. He says marriage. Okay, when he created right. man, he called him husband and wife. He, a helpmate. He didn't say a boyfriend. Yeah, right, right. He didn't say a girlfriend. Right. Okay, so you got to remember that. This is, again, rule number one, we broke. We broke the rule number one. We call boyfriend and girlfriend. God doesn't call uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. You see, look how far we're falling just by taking one God design and then say, hey, you're my boyfriend, you're my girlfriend, and look what has happened. Let me mention one other thing about orchestra. 
there's another word for it's timing. Don't forget, you just can't Ooh. start playing your music. You have to come in at the right time. Oh, Joe, that's beautiful. In the right note. Isn't it? You know what? I'm going to attach that. <laughs> what Joey's saying is this. Your husband come home from work, and he's tired. Uh, yeah. And then you want to tell him something. You want to kind of complain. But you say, uh, you know what? I'm not going to uh, say nothing right. now. I'm going to wait after he eat. He relax. He's taking a bath. He's laying down. And then I come and hit okay. him over the head with this problem. <laughs> Again, the timing. And a lot Bad of analogy us, over the head. But yeah, no, Victor's yeah. right. you got to wait for that right timing. It might even be a couple of days. You know, you got to watch when somebody's ready uh, to accept the situation yes. or the problem. Yes, yes, good. And that is true. So the beauty of it is this. Now, the reason why we're saying about women, because women usually don't want to come with the children that are single. And then that can create a lot of problem in a relationship because, again, if you are listening to all of these false teachers who have no knowledge of the creator, how you design you, how you design family structure, how you design kids, and you take advice from these people, obviously, you got the wrong advice from someone because that's why you're in that situation you are in today. The okay. advice was wrong. Right, yeah. That's why it didn't work out. That's why you single mother. Okay, mm -hmm. men as well. But the reason we're targeting women, not to beat up on women, because you have the children, and remember, God loves you beyond you can even imagine, ladies, okay? And he wants the best for you. He's giving you certain gifts because why? God called you the princess, he says, you are my princess. You are my child. And God protects a woman. This is what we're talking about. For your protection, ladies. Those of you who have children mm. to protect you and to protect your children. Right. This is what it's about. Right. Because we care about you. We love you. We want the best for you and the best for your children. This is why we're talking about women with children. And also, why should men marry you as well? What it is that you're going to bring? How to see this? How to live with this person? How to make this relationship work if you do find that right person. Because at the end, ladies, your children are going to leave. And where do you stand? What do you want, a dog and a cat, a pig or a horse to be, to keep you companion as you get old? A monkey, a gorilla? You want to be with your soul, mate. You want to be with that person as you get older. And I'm sure your kids are going to want that as well. What child want their parents to grow old by themselves? Mm, mm, mm. No, right. no kids wants that. So again, what we're doing is for the protection of the woman, is to protect you because you are vulnerable, you are sensitive, and God loves you, and you are priceless in the eyes of God. And we're here to help to help you understand that and to give you points how to make this work. You should if you should find someone. Okay. Um, so again, these were now this is what has happened to a lot of women because what they did, they decided to listen to all the other fools. And they messed themselves up. Mm -hmm. And this is the, some of the questions they came up with, some of these problems they're facing today because they didn't, they decide to not listen to the king. Mm -hmm. They decide to not to listen to their father, who's the king in heaven, God in heaven, who's your father. A lot of you decided not to listen to him and say, I'm going to listen to Joe. Ah. I'm going to listen to Victor. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to my father. And guess what? That's why your life looks the way it looks today. Either or you were misinformed. Or you were not, you did not have this information to govern your life. So again, we're sharing these things that you may know someone, it may be you, that has these particular issues and you're wondering why it's not working. And we're not saying, listen, like you just said, Victor, don't listen to Victor or Joe. We're telling you, go to the source. There you we're go. We're not saying, listen to me, I'm telling you, I do this, go to the source. And what we're teaching is the source. What we're teaching you is the things people are saying and doing and how it contradicts the source. There you go, right. How it contradicts the source. This is what this right. is about. How what your belief is going against God who designed you. And when he designed you, you were a diamond. You are a diamond. And guess what? You're priceless as a diamond, ladies, mm. mothers. Okay? So you have to remember that. It's because we care. And But now this is the things that, because why society, the lefties, the liberals, women, decide to say, hey, you know what? Forget about God, ladies. We don't need God. We can do this. And that's why you were there today. Because why? You listen to these liberal women. Again, if you look at every liberal woman, guess what? They're not married. They're not happy. And a lot of them, too, don't have children. Why? Because anytime you go against God, do you really think you're going to win? No, no, exactly. Think not. about it. You go against God, how are you going to win? Mm -hmm. You're never going to win. It's a lose situation when you go against God. And I don't want to lose, Joe. Mm -hmm. No, definitely not. You know, you're the same. If you can't beat them, 
Yeah, join them. You join them. <laughs> if you can't beat them, you join them. Mm. You see? So, again, let's get into it. Now, it says, uh, now, what happened is this. How to make it work or give yourself a chance when you're a single mother looking for a man, you know, to be a husband and to come into a family unit that's already established. When you have, you are a single woman and you have three or four children. How does he fit into this? How do you see him? And it says, now remember, he's not the biological. Already, if 50% of this is not going to work. Because why you come in with kids and why 50% it may not work is one, you don't have the right understanding of the creator of how he says to be as a woman and you don't and you have false information and now these kids as well hey that's not my father what should i listen to him joe mm -hmm. what should i listen well, to right, him right exactly he's a stranger right a lot of them say that exactly and, uh, most, that? most of them say that most kids say that mm -hmm. you're not my daddy mm -hmm. and guess what when a kid says that to a man you're not my daddy that's hurtful mm -hmm. it very very much because it's reminding him I'm not part of this family. It's reminding him I'm going to always be an outsider. Well, blood is thicker than water. So, ah, uh, yes. I mean, which is, uh, I mean, there's. But it's the truth, though, whether right, we like is. it or not. Right, it is. It's the it truth. Is. I'm not your biological right. father. Mm -hmm. And the child, know, think about it. Every child wants to get close to their biological father. Mm -hmm. Every child wants that. They desire that. Now, as a man coming in, we know that. But when a child reminds us that, there's many ways you do things that will remind a man that he's not really part of the family, that he's not the biological father. It makes him feel insignificant. He feel like he has no position in the house. You know, it, it, eventually it breaks down. Because and that why? goes a couple ways because mm -hmm. don't forget, uh, the parent, you know, knows the child and that's blood right there. Mm -hmm. So if you have somebody else coming into their marriage, there's a little bit of imbalance, so that's got to be um, discussed or you be aware of that and uh, look for how to handle that. Beautiful, Joe. As Joe always do, always ahead because he has all these questions. <laughs> and he's right. There's going to always be an imbalance, and it's, it's always going to be in a place. All of you who have been in this position that you're going to be uncomfortable, your kid's going to be uncomfortable, he's going to be uncomfortable. Why? Because it's almost like a line... But that's not spoken. It's like having the elephant in the room, but you don't talk about it. Right, exactly. You know, it's like having the elephant in the room, but you don't talk about it. Guess what? How can you ever be happy as the wife, as the husband, and the kids? How can you ever be happy when there's an elephant in the room to remind you who you are, where you stand? Mm -hmm. You see? So that boundary will eventually destroy the relationship. It, it will. will destroy. Right. It's just a matter of time. Well, when you get into a relationship, that's what you got to be aware of. It makes sure when you marry someone, when you have children, man or woman, that the uh, priority is... Um, uh, it's the husband. Okay, well, it's it's the priority the, is um, if, if your heart's there. If the heart is there from both spouses or the person you're marrying, when you're going in with children, you have to see how their heart and mind is. And you can't be looking for something to financially take care of you Ooh. or you have to be responsible for that beautiful joe what joe is saying what he's saying that what is your motive yeah 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 good yeah what's the motive um, why are you getting involved with this man what is your true yeah. motive and the dangerous thing about it is this if you're going in with the wrong motive you're going to destroy everybody in that family because eventually you have to pay for the cost because why if your motive is not god motive guess what you already lost Again, if you can't beat them, you join them, and no one has beat God. Nobody right. in the history of the world right. has ever beat God when they went against his word. So meaning that, guaranteed to fail. You're guaranteed to fail. So we're telling you what you need to know for you to succeed. Okay? Guaranteed to fail. So the, again, um, so when you go in, the, um, I've spoken to a lot of men quite a bit when I hear them and in the conversation. Yeah, I did it. This woman, she had this kid, man, and the kid was this. There was a lot of complaint. You know, the woman allowed the kid to kind of run over the guy. Because what happened is the relationship is this. There's really, a lot of times there's no respect because the kid overrides the stepfather. You see, the mother will override like the stepfather may say, no, no, let's do this. And then the kid don't like it. And then they override over look the stepfather. And don't forget, it goes both ways too. Right, it does. If a man marries a woman, it's the same thing. I always want to bring that up because 
It's not one gender or the other. It's and Joey's right. He's right. It goes both ways. Goes that is true. Way. But again, you have to remember that it's easy. Because why? The parent maybe feel guilty. The father's not there. And I have a strange man coming in. I don't want him to talk to my son or daughter a certain way. Treat him a certain way. So now you want to be protective. If you want to be protective of your kids, don't get married. Don't. Wait till they grow up in the right. Muslim. Right. In the okay. Muslim mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. they don't get married when the kids are small. They will, when the kids leave the house, that's when they remarry. Why? I didn't know that. Yeah. Because I had a friend that's a Muslim, and she was telling me that we're, when we were teaching together, she said, no, Victor, we don't, we don't get married. When we, if we divorce, we have kids, we don't remarry. We wait till the kids grow up. Then we remarry out of the house. Because it's true. When you think about it, a lot of problems come out of that situation. When you are a single mother and you remarry, most of the problem is coming from the children. Mm -hmm. Why? Because as a woman, you divide it. Mm -hmm. Who, when, because it's a constant battle. Whose side should I take? Mm -hmm. Because the situation is going to come up. Do I take my child's side or do I take my husband's right, side? Right, right. It's a constant back and forth, back and forth. Guess what? That's exhausting. It is. It would be. It's going to be exhausting. One of you going to say, you know, I'm done with this. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. One of you going to give up. You may not say it verbally, but mentally you checked out already. Mm -hmm. You don't care. You're just waiting for that moment to exit. You see? So this is a battle, a struggle for the relationship. Back and forth, back and forth. Whose side do I take as the mother? Because you caught in the middle. As a woman, you caught in the middle. Whose side do I take? Who do I believe? Mm -hmm. You see? So that's what makes it very difficult. Now, again, the respect, it has to be there. The number one thing. Oh, absolutely. Beside the love and your good intention, why are you entering this relationship with this man who is not the biological father? Respect. Everybody has to respect. I was going to say, everybody has to be. Everybody. Yeah. Unconditional respect. Right. In the Torah, it says when. A man marries a woman, he and that's not his child, he's considered a biological father. You treat him exactly as if he was a biological father. Listen to what the Torah said. Right. See, the Torah said to treat him as if he is the biological father. Not that he's not. He is. Once he marries you, he becomes that. So that means... There's a fine line when uh, that happens in the, uh, ex, the, the ex, being man or woman, they're still involved in a relationship with the child. So, I mean, I have to admit, I was involved in that situation. And um, I had to have respect for the, uh, the ex-husband because he was still involved with the child. So I had to back out. I had to know my responsibility. Now, if he wasn't in the picture at all, then I would have to play more responsibility. But still, I think because it was the... Um, girl's child that was her main priority i had to you know you have to walk that fine line where your decisions come in exactly so this relationship is always going to be under stress walking on eggshell walking on this fine line because you yourself not sure should i say something to him or not should i discipline this kid or not because you're not sure because why you're not sure because the way the mother makes you feel towards that child if the mother was, you know, again, that's what I'm saying, ladies, because how you behave will determine how your husband is going to feel towards you and whether or not he's going to stay around. Because I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm in a relationship like that, I feel I have to tiptoe. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Why should I? It's not my child. No, exactly. Why should exactly. I? I'd rather go get a woman that has no children. I don't have to tiptoe around. Mm -hmm. I'd rather go get a single woman or a woman whose child is out of the house. Why should I be with you for? Because all I'm doing is making myself miserable. Because why? I have to please you and I have to mm -hmm. please your child. Mm -hmm. But neither one of you pleasing me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I become what? A nobody. Right, a puppet. A puppet, yeah. yeah. I become a puppet. You see, so why should I be in that relationship when I'm nothing more than a puppet or a, a servant? I'm there to serve you and your child. That's all it is. And what do I get in return? Really nothing. And let's be honest with it. Let's be honest. Let's go a little deeper. Well, you know, there's never been, excuse me, Victor. No, no. There's never, uh, I mean, I mean, all of a sudden thought of it, there should be like a course. If you're going to marry someone, you have children, I don't think there's ever any discussion of, oh, how do I handle it? There's not a course. I think there should be some kind of guidelines about what responsibility. I mean, it should come natural, but it it's doesn't. Not. Because why it doesn't come natural? Because you were not taught 
what uh, that means, yes. how to do it. Uh -huh. So you're going according to bad information your girlfriends gave you, your mother gave you, your friends giving you, the public is giving you, YouTube is giving you, everybody's giving you bad information. Even your own children giving you bad information. So how do you know what to do, when to do it, and how are you going to be successful? You, you can't. Know, one thing I think you'd have to do, if there isn't any course, I mean... This is kind of like... This is the course. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Would be uh, the people have to sit down before they even get involved and go, look, you know, maybe the mother or the father has to talk to the child. Look, we're getting married. Now, they, everybody has a different responsibility. You have to listen to this or whatever. I think it has to... Well, everything's got to be discussed. And, you know, why it doesn't work, too, is this. If you don't have a foundation of God, God laws. Yeah, you got to have that foundation. If that kid has a foundation of God's law, the wife or the mother has a foundation of God's law. So when this new God man comes in, this new father comes in, and he has that foundation, everybody know, like Joe said, in the orchestra. Oh, everybody yeah. know their role. And then this kid said, well, God says he's my biological father because he already knows that. So I have to treat him like he's my biological father. Exactly. I have to respect him. And think of the responsibility of the child himself. I mean, uh, he's already upset about the marriage being broken yes. up. Yes. Uh, his dad's not there. I mean, whose fault is it? And then ah. a lot of children blame themselves. And then maybe they're, they don't want to disrupt this relationship or the new relationship. So it's all uh, discombobulated. Is that a word? Yes, it's discombobulated. Yeah. You just don't feel like, you know, you feel like you're in constant chaos. Yeah, you know, exactly. In turmoil, you, you know, the house always feels like there's a tornado inside the house. And there's no peace. Again, what's the benefit for a man to stay? You know, and when there's a conflict, like you said, Victor, you know, it always comes up, well, you're not my mother. You're not my father. Yeah. You can't tell me what to do. Exactly. That always is going to come up uh, sooner or later. And like you said, that's very hurtful. It's very, very hurtful, disrespect, and then... Just, that's enough for him to say, you know what, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Hey, let me go find mm -hmm. a woman with no kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why not? There's a lot of women who got no kids today. Why should he stay with you? Ladies, you, again, your understanding of this is, your percep perception of this is false because you're under the impression you're entitled. When you got married and have children and you divorce, you put yourself in a position that's really now, you're not in a position too much to negotiate in terms of what you really want because you no longer... Because, see, men look at women, and you need to understand that. They look at your status, meaning that the higher you are if you have no children. Why? Because they don't have to put up with the headache. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Ladies, let's say that was you. Would you want to marry a guy who has six kids? Mm. Yeah, very hard. Why would you want to marry a man who has six children when you can find a man who has no children? Think about it. Why would you put yourself through that? See, you're now, not thinking that. I'm not saying that, you know, I mean, if he, he, that's a bad thing to do to get involved with somebody who has children, mm -hmm. that, that's okay. But you have to know the guidelines here. You have to know what we're all getting into. Yes. You know, what's your responsibility? I don't have a job or I'm only a, you know, I can bring, the, we got to have more money coming in. What, all that has to be uh, talked about. And not mentioning, right. And not mentioning when the finance come into this too now. And the thing is, uh, I'll tell you a story so you kind of feel where, what I'm saying. They, and then we'll continue. There was just one man. Um, he got married to this single mother and he raised this daughter. I think she was like seven years old and he raised her. And then she was, I think 20, 20 or 20 something years old. And this man had money and then he raised her. Now on the day of the wedding, uh, the man, the stepfather paid, I think somewhere close to 60, $80,000 for the wedding. Mm. Listen to this. He paid close to $80,000 of the wedding. And this young girl never seen the father the whole time. Now, she's about to get married. She invited her father. And what she did, she didn't even, um, I don't think the, uh, I'm not sure the complete the story, but just, get, just for you to get an idea. Either he was not invited to the wedding, he did not know, uh, or she wanted the father that was not her biological father, that was not in her life, to walk her down the aisle. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? Kennedy's were, we won't get into that. They said that. Kennedy's were the same situation when they got married. But, okay. But you understand? Uh, sorry so how, that. No, Go it's ahead. fine. So, yeah, yeah. But how hurtful is that? I raised you. I'm paying for your wedding. Your father was a complete bum, a complete loser. Right. Which is, guess what? The mother picked up, picked a loser. Yeah. Ladies, you picked a loser. So let's get it straight. I know it's hard talk, 
but it's truth talk. You pick the loser. They know. We know. Yeah. So so you understand. You pick the loser, and now you have a guy who's a winner, and that's not his child, and he pays for everything. He took care of this child, and now this child doesn't want him to walk her down the aisle. She wants the loser father to walk her down the aisle. Where is the justice in that? Yeah. And guess what? What happened? He left her. He divorced her and left. And he never had nothing to do with neither one of them again. He had nothing to do with neither one of them ever again. He went on with his life. Why? The truth is, neither one of you deserve that kind of man. That was, that was a really dirty, down, scumbag thing to do. I'm sure that uh, happens quite often yes, in, in today's world. Yes. And that's a shame. That's a that's shame. That's hurtful. It is. For everybody around. Yeah. It's, it, everybody lost. Mm -hmm. She lost a good... And why did this take place? Because why? The mother did not teach that young woman to respect him and love him and appreciate what he has done for both of them. Mm -hmm. He took care of them. He did what that loser did not do. Mm -hmm. He came into your life, took care of you and your child to the point where she went to college, getting married, paying for everything, and this is how you repay him back. What it's called? Lack of gratitude. And again, it shows because, and it, it makes sense why she picked the loser to be the father of this child. Because why? At the end, she showed she was a loser from the beginning and a loser to the end. Because why? That was her mindset. I guarantee you that... Uh... In every situation like that, there will always be someone thinking either they'll say it or they'll think it like, how come I'm coming up more with the money? Why is it my money? That's not my child. That'll always come up in the back of the head. Yeah. I mean. And it really will come up because the way you've been treating this person throughout the relationship. You know what I mean? Right. Because you're going to put doubt. You're going to say, right. well, you know what? This is not my kid. Look how they've been treating me for 10, 15 years in this relationship. Right, especially if it's not you know, treated right. I know most guys that I've known that talk to me about relationship, why, why they left was because of the mother and the child. They left. They didn't want nothing to do with it again because all these things that happened to them, they say, you know what? And they, guess what? They all went and found somebody that was very different from you that had these kids. And again, this is what happened. And guess what? You lost on a blessing and God's going to make sure you're not going to find another one. Why? He gave you another, a second chance to find somebody good. And this is what you did to him. So now your punishment, and if you notice, your punishment will be to live by yourself and tell people, I had a good guy, but I messed up. Mm -hmm. How many people would say that? Mm -hmm. I had a good girl, I messed mm -hmm. up. I had a good man, I messed mm -hmm. up. To this day, some of you are saying that. Mm -hmm. I had exactly. a good person, I messed up. Mm -hmm. You see? That's your punishment. To be a mouth, a speaker for doing the wrong thing so other people can learn from you. So God says, now you're going to be the voice for other people to learn from. You're not going to get it. Because if you get it, you're not going to talk about it. But if you don't get it, you're going to go around and speak about, I had a good man, I had a good woman, and I lost out. So you see, all you're doing is, at the end, is you suffer. Now, again, when it comes to discipline, we don't know who's going to discipline the child. There's always going to be that fine line. Should I say something? Should I not say something? And then the man is constantly trying to make both sides, the kids and the parent, feel comfortable. Now, of course, there are scumbag men, some of you women do marry who don't care. He, uh, you know, I heard he'll cuss the kid out, he'll beat the kid, he'll disrespect the kid, he'll disrespect the mother. Sometimes he'll beat the mother, you know, in a, there's fights. The kid's trying to protect the mother from this stepfather. That's more rampant than we realize. That is yeah. very... Uh... A problem in the uh, United States, probably all over the world, but the United States is very rampant that that happens. Yes. And the question that is... Abuse. That yes. abuse. It's true, yeah. And so now again, you know, on the discipline, that creates a problem in the relationship. Then you have... Then the man is also seen... You become invisible. There's an invisible line that you don't want to cross because you always, like we mentioned, tiptoeing how you talk to the kids. You know, you can't talk in a firm voice. You got to be like, oh, okay, honey, because you're afraid you may, if you say something, the kid going to hate you and they're going to talk to back talk back to you or define you. And then now, you now the mother going to say, why you talk to my child like that? Don't talk to speak to my kid like this. Some women will do that. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Who do you think you are? You're not his father. Mm -hmm. And right there, the relationship is over. Victor, we're always talking about the problem, mm -hmm. which is a main issue. A lot mm -hmm. of problems. Then we got to go back. How do you correct that? And this is it. By knowing the problem, then you know what not to do. Right. And part of it is right. You yeah. have to go back to the source, the your obligations, your responsibility. 
reading the Bible, reading the Torah, understanding of God's laws. Yes. Are. You have to know that. Yes. And also, again, these are the things that you're doing wrong that creates the problem and why it will not succeed, it will fail. And then again, so we're talking about take away your, uh, it, this takes away the, the manhood. The man feels like a child. He feels like, you know, is is um, that she's the boss, you know. Mm -hmm. She's the boss of the house because it's easily, easily she can end up becoming the boss of the house because everybody's against him. Mm -hmm. The kid's against him, she's against him. And they know that. The kids know that. And the man is naturally a leader. And he will realize, I must leave this relationship. And then if he has friends, guys who are friends say, listen, man, why are you with this woman? You can do better. Mm -hmm. And he's and he's right. The friends are true. It's right. If you disrespect it, you don't feel like this, you can do better. Mm -hmm. Why stay with you? You see? Again, this is what you're doing. This is the side you don't see and that you're doing either intentionally or unintentionally or both, or you don't simply don't care because, like Joe said, you're married because you wanted help. Right, right. You know, right. you weren't looking for a husband, you were looking for help. Help. That's all you were looking for. What is the man benefit from this relationship? What is it? Okay. Now again, he's walking on the edge. Now pretending to be happy. What's going to happen is that you're going to pretend to be happy when you're not happy. You're not happy. You're pretending just to keep peace mm -hmm. in a relationship, mm -hmm. not because you're happy. But trust me, most men in these relationships they are not happy. For whatever reason, they still hanging in there. I don't know, but again, they will eventually exit. Let the right woman who comes around and that treats them different from what you're doing. They're going to leave you. Well, you know what happens in the beginning of a relationship, the, um, let's see, everybody is satisfied in each other during the relationship. And then when um, you wind up getting married and somebody has children, then that relationship switch to the child. If, uh, if it's a man having a child, you have a lot of, um, you give a lot of attention to the woman. And then when you get married and all of a sudden, it becomes where now all of a sudden you have more attention to your child. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I see in my mind. And I think a lot of that happens, uh, again, we lose the, um, the uh, responsibility that we get the merit when we get into the marriage. And look how beautiful what you were saying, too. Think about it. Imagine you had the right information. You wouldn't be in the situation right now. Not exactly. You wouldn't be. That's right. the whole point. The point is not to get into the situation. That's the purpose of the Torah. The Torah is called the book of war, meaning that you are in a war in this physical world. There's a battle. If you don't have the battle plan, if you don't have the battle strategy, you're going to lose the war. And then there's many things in life. We've been taught, oh, you can fix it. That's not true. Mm -hmm. There are many things in life we can't fix. There are many things in life that's too late, Right? It's too late for your father to raise you if you haven't seen your father in 50 years. Right, exactly. Right, it's too late right, for your mother to raise right, you if you haven't seen right. your mother in 50 years. Mm -hmm. It's too mm -hmm. late. Mm -hmm. So there are things in life that are too late. It's too late if you didn't give me a good father. As a mother, if you didn't choose a good man to be my father, it's too late. Mm -hmm. You gave me a scumbag. That's my heritage. My heritage is a scumbag father or woman too. So you have, again, there are things that are too late. You cannot fix you have to deal with this with this scar, with this wound. And half that problem is, well, when you wind up, uh, well, let's get right, right to the point. Having sex early, and then you wind up half to getting married, and now all of a sudden you're starting in with uh, not the right... Uh, ah, intention. Intentions, yeah, yeah, good. Not the right plan. You didn't even, you were, you were way outside the plan. Right, right. I mean, your plan completely contradicts God's plan. And listen, what you're telling God, you're saying, God, look, God, okay, your plan is fine. It's okay. But it was fine for people 3,000 years ago, God. But I'm Victor. I'm Victor. This is 2023. Your plan doesn't work anymore. No, and guess right, what? Exactly. That's what we do to God. See, the problem is this. We're thinking God's plan is no longer applicable because we live in 2023. This was created three, um, 6,000 years ago. Guess what? God says, my plan will never be neglected. It will never void. It will never go out of style. It will be always be applicable. Because why? You're going to change, but the structure doesn't change. Does the structure of a man change? No. Does the structure of a, a woman change? No. 
a woman gives birth and a man, you know, doesn't give birth. That doesn't change. It doesn't matter what we do to ourselves. It doesn't change because that's the plan. You go to sleep at night, you wake up during the day. The sun goes down, the sun goes up. We do, can't change those things. So you, what you're doing, you're fighting something that cannot be changed. And when you fight something that's going to cannot be changed, guess what? Eventually, you're going to be exhausted. It's like we say, um, when you go against the wave, how long can you keep going against the wave, Joe? Mm -hmm. Eventually, you're going you're gonna to get tired, right? Yeah, exactly. And when you get tired, what do the wave do? The wave sweep you away because you're tired. Well, you wind up getting involved in a relationship, and a lot of people say, well, you know what? I can change that when you can't. They always say, well, I can change him or I can change her. I think I was in a situation. Going against the wave. Yeah. And don't forget, first of all, we wind up getting married way too early. I guarantee you, if we get married when we're at least 30, you'll have more uh, knowledge. And then also, too, when you get married and you're young, well, I hate to say this, too, but a lot of it is about the uh, sex, Victor. Yes. Oh, lust. Yeah, yeah the lust. lust. Right. It's lust. You got into it because of lust. You didn't get into it for anything else. And, and the Torah speak about lust. Lust, listen to this, lust leads to death. Lust equals death wow. because it will not equal to life. Lust equals to death. Ooh, I've got to write that down. I like how you said yeah, that. Lust heard that. equals to death. death. Lust does not equal to life. Torah, Ten Commandments equals to life. You see that? Torah equals to life. Torah equals to life. Yeah. And lust, lust equals, equals to death. Right. You see? Sin equals to death. There you go. Crime, Crime equals, equals to death. imprisonment. Imprisonment, right. Yeah. You see? And those are rules, ladies and gentlemen. Because you're going against the rules of the creator, and you think you better, God say, oh, yeah, let's see if you can change my rules. Remember, that's what I'm telling God. Hey, I can change it. All you're doing is beating up yourself, <clears throat> and you're going to fail at the end. That's all. You'll never win. So it says now, who comes first? You married to this new husband who comes for him or the children. Guess what? He comes first. Mm. Sh should be. Well, yeah. He comes I'm, first. Again, if you don't want him to be first, don't get married. <laughs> See? I love what Joe said. Because why? He's using human logic. That's not what God says. That's a fine balance, though. I mean, you're right. Who does come first? Well, love comes first. You got to... You got to love uh, your children. You got to love your spouse. You got to, it's a fine balance. I mean. And you're right. What Joe's saying from our human perspective, and guess what? Isn't that why you're in a situation today? Because right. you're using human logic. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. When I did not know this too, I was trying to use human logic and try to be fair about it. Remember, the only person who has the truth that's fair, that knows love is God, not us. We don't know. That's why he's giving us. Because why he created us. So he creates with certain things that this is how it's going to work for you. Okay? He created us so he knows what's good for us. So again, I have stopped thinking that I know. I go by what he says. And guess what? Ever since I started applying everything to my life, my life has just been very peaceful in terms of I'm comfortable with my decision. Well, what is that saying goes? It's like a little different, but when you leave, when you get married, you leave your parents and then your, your husband is the number one. It says, God says, leave your father, leave your mother, mother. and become one uh, flesh. Okay, right. Now think, that's what he says, right. become one. So how are you going to become one when you decide to be one with your children? Right, so... Uh, ah, so, you see that? Okay, so... Oh, that's a beautiful husband, wife, husband and wife should come first. And, you know, not to put the children in uh, second category, but, yeah, I think you're right. God says yeah. children second. Because if the two work together then the third can be involved. If the two don't work together, then the third one's Every, lost. Everything's fault. Everybody's fault. Yeah. Everything's lost. So, oh, I like how, Is yeah. How, everything's how lost. How we brought that together. Yeah, beautiful. Because again, so, so the, spouse should be first. Spouse is always first. Right. Think about it. When you're in heaven, did God create children in heaven? No, he created Adam and Eve. Who did he create first? Yeah. The parents, right? Adam and Eve, yeah. I didn't hear children. Well, you know, I asked somebody one time. Uh, actually, it was on my job. Excuse me again. No, 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 you're fine, right. yeah. I said, who's, honestly, how did I say it? Like, uh, who's more important, you or your child? Well, who comes first? And this person says, oh, my child. I go, okay, that's good. But if you don't take care of yourself physically and mentally, you're not going to be able to ch take care of your child. So in a way... You have to come first because you got to take care of yourself. Again, if you don't take care of yourself, 
So uh, do, you have drugs, to do your obligation. You can't do your obligation. Yes. So again, in a marriage relationship, that when you're married, then Victor said, now you become one. Yes. So the both of you are the main priority. Yes. And not not that again to put the kids second priority, but to to make that all work, then you gotta have the spouses gotta be one, like Victor said. Well, that's Ooh, a, well, like, good Victor. Oh, well, that's the tour. Think about it. Everybody knows about Adam and Eve, but nobody knows about Adam and his children. Is it Adam and his children? Uh, Is it Eve and her children? Mm -hmm. They only talk about Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. You right. don't hear nowhere in there you hear about children. Mm -hmm. If God wanted children to be first, he would have created Adam, then children, and then Eve. Yeah, that's right. Whoa. I like how you put that. You see that? So again, because you chose to do opposite of God is why you fail. And you're going to keep failing. As long as you keep going against God, you're going to keep failing. That's your future. Your future is you're going to fail. And we're all God's children. We all got children. The kids are always second. Always second. Because when you die, you don't reunite. Remember, how can the kids be first? You women and men says, I'm looking for my soulmate. Is your soulmate your child? What does it mean, soulmate? No, right. No, your soulmate is your child. Yeah, your soulmate is not your kids. So that's why God's not married. Because if God, <laughs> God was married, we'd be in second place. Yeah, we'd be in second place. <laughs> God doesn't need anything from us. He doesn't need nothing. He's complete. So he created our soulmate. Our soulmate means our soulmate means our other half. Other half. Like he uh, did with Adam and Eve. When he created Adam, what did he do? He put Adam to sleep because the angels thought Adam was God. So he put Adam to sleep. What did he do? He took a piece of Adam's rib and created you, the woman. Adam is the only man that ever gave birth to a woman. Uh, gave yeah, birth. I like how you put that. Right. Adam is the only right. one who ever gave right. birth because why God took him? Why God took his rib? Because God says that's part of you. That's your soulmate. Your child is going to look for their soulmate. The same way you got your soulmate, I have a soulmate for your children. You see? So your children always in second place. There's no exception. That's the rules. Because when you had those kids, think about it. When you had those kids, were they around? No. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those kids came when after you got with this guy. When you got with this guy, you got pregnant, you had those kids. They came second. Who came first? Mm. Your kids or your husband? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? How did, the kid, mm -hmm. hey, how did we came into this world? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. mom had to pick a man. Yeah, exactly. Right? Right. And then we came second. Because I was in test tube, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. So mom had to pick a man, and it's why we came. We were second. You see? Mm -hmm. You see how the rule is? You see what happened when you decide to go against the rules, against the grain, against the creation? You lose. The kids are always second. I'm testimony. I'm second to my father. I'm testimony. I'm second to my mom. Joe's a testimony. He's second to his father. Second to his mom because his mother had to get a man, had to get a husband to bring him, which made him second. So again, ladies and gentlemen, don't fool yourself. You've been giving wrong information. God structured the world a certain way. It's going to flow. No man is going to change that. You either go with the winning side or lose. There's only one winning side, and that's God. There's a saying in the Bible, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember, even if I read it, but I heard about it, that uh, we, husband and wife have to be yoked. Yes, equally yoked. Okay, equally yes, yoked, yeah. Yes, So meaning that... And that means, yeah, no, you explain that. No, okay, I apologize. I mean, this is your soulmate. You both have the same level. Like, we talk about... See, what happened is when people get with other people is this. Imagine you, you, let's use credit score because everybody understands credit score. Let's use a credit score. Let's say your credit score is 850. Ooh, mine's high. Yeah? Thank you. And man. then you find a woman or a man and his credit score is 300. Are you compatible? Ooh, no. No. Mm -hmm. But you have an 850. Why do you maintain an 850? Because you understand the sacrifice, the work. You have the knowledge and understanding why it's important to maintain an 850. And you better run if you see <laughs> Does he exactly? So the one that's you a three hundred. No, you better run. You better run because he has no idea no, exactly. what it means to keep exactly. up eight fifty. Yeah. It shows he's negligent. He's right. not responsible. Something's wrong there. Right. Something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Why is three hundred? Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that, it's, and you know it's not easy to have an eight fifty. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that, especially in this struggling economy. That's the point. Because meaning that you got somebody who does not understand what a relationship means. The same way he doesn't understand what it means to keep a credit score, 
you're going to struggle financially. Well, that's even talking about obligation. When you borrow money, there's an obligation. You got to pay that back. Yes. And if it's missing, then your credit score goes. No obligation, no responsibility. And now, what does this mean? There is really no future for you in this man because already you had his planning and exit strategy. In his mind, he's not telling you. He says, I don't want to be in this situation. No man wants to be in it. Even you, as a woman, you would want to be in there if you felt second to, to a man's kids. You know, I remember there was another woman that I have, that was a friend of mine. She got divorced, and then she was dating, and she says to me, all this guy wanted me for is to babysit his kids. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, and guess what? She left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She left him. Mm -hmm. But again, this is the situation you put people. Again, now, they're going to feel it. They're going to know you can't hide this if you're not sincere. No, you have alternative motives. Even if you hide it, what's going to yeah. happen is this. Eventually, God says, this man or this woman came into your life and helped you and you mistreat them. I'm going to wait 20 years after the kids leave for you to think you got away with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to pay the price by being sick, by being by yourself, by growing old by yourself and dying alone. Because there is going to be a punishment. Why? Why is God going to punish you for this? Because what's going to happen is he doesn't want you to go to hell. So because you did such an evil thing to a man that was good to you and your kids... I have to punish you here. So that means in your later years, you're going to suffer for what you did. You're not going to escape. Can you imagine you setting yourself up? You don't even know you're doing that. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, oh, my kids is grown. I don't need you. Get the heck out, Joe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't need you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Wrong. That's when your punishment begins. You just don't know it yet. It's coming 20 years from now. Your punishment, because why? God don't want you to go to hell because hell is much more worse billion times worse. So God says I have to bring this punishment on you here on earth. So when your kids are gone, you're never going to have a man. You're going to grow old. You're going to be sick. And your kids may not even want nothing to do with you, even if you're sick. Right. Now it's happening. That's happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, uh, my mom's sick. I forget about it. Let her die. Right. right Let her right, die. But right. she's your mom. Who cares? I really don't care about it. They may not say it that way, but their attitude, their behavior is like that. Unless That's your punishment. A, unless there's a big will. And listen, yes. And look at that's beautiful. Look <laughs> at the punishment. The same way you made your kids disrespected that man and ignore that man, 20 years later, your kids are gonna ignore you too. Mm -hmm. When Who you goes sit around, comes, comes around. around. So your kids are gonna disrespect you, they're not gonna come see you, they're not gonna talk to you, they're not gonna keep in contact with you. Why? That's how you taught them to treat that man who raised them. So now it's payback. They're going to do the same thing you allow those kids to do to that guy. There you go They're again. Go taught, 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 taught the wrong thing. Yes. You see, so look look what we're doing to ourselves because we did not know. We're thinking we're getting away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not getting mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. okay. And not only that, you just destroy your kids and you just destroy your right. future. Right. Because your kids are going to do it to you. They're going to do it to you. How many women out there, you don't have a close relationship with your children. Your children are ignoring you. You're not in contact. They could care less about you. Once in a, hey, once every 5,000 years, they call you up. Hey, mom, how you doing? Hey, it's been 5,000 years since I heard from you. Why? Because I don't care about you. You didn't teach me to care about my stepfather. So in return, I don't care about you. And now you want to play, look at the view of it. You want to play the victim now. Uh, oh, I did everything for my son. Uh -huh. I did everything for my daughter. Look how they treated me. God said, whoa, uh -huh. back up hold there. on, back up there. Yeah. Look how you treated the guy uh -huh. who took care of your kids. Uh -huh. All I'm doing is making your kids treat you the same way. You see, now you're a liar. You see, you're telling people how your children are mistreating you. Well, guess what about the guy, how you mistreated him with your kids? So it's payback. So again, uh, nobody wins. No, you know, I'm, I'm watching. I'm not going to get into the case. I'm watching this case on uh, TV or YouTube. And actually, it's a very, very, very wealthy family. And to make my point is, they're in such a chaos of a whole situation. And I'll guarantee you, there's not God in that house one bit. And Abraham beautifully said that. And when he went to Misheim with his wife, that's why he told his wife, tell him I'm your sister. And he says, why? You want me to tell people that I'm your sister? He says, this place has no God. That's Egypt. Egypt. Mishlam. Yeah, Mishlam. So he says, a place that has no God, they will kill you. 
-hmm. A man who don't believe in God will kill you. A woman who don't believe in God will kill you. Or fear God. It's fear. If you don't fear God, a woman will kill you. If you don't fear God, a man will kill you. Meaning that he can do anything to you. Because why are you not afraid? And the true God, what I mean by that is not a fake where you go to church on Sunday and you come home and it's chaos again. You know, oh, I'm nice in front of everybody. It's the fake. There's a lot of fake religion. Yes. Or fake belief. To release oh, your conscience. Yeah. Right. And once you uh, get out of that church. You're right back. Hey, the horns come back out. There you go. Yeah. Hey, hey when you go, hey, like Joe said, when you go to church, you take off, hey, okay, yeah, take uh, off the horn. Uh, yeah. Put the horns away. Put we, the horns in the car. We see that. Yeah, put the horns in the car right. and then walk into the church. Right. You got to make that image. Look at me, everybody. I go to church on Sunday. And then you beat your wife or you whatever. Yeah, what you do you mean? Do. When you get in the car, you, you commit adultery. Yeah. When you get back in the car after yeah. church, you put the horns back on. There you go. Ah! Ooh. <laughs> I got <laughs> mine in a drawer. I hope I don't bring them up. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it. Again, when you will get, again, again, you share these videos, okay? Teach your girls. Teach your kids. This is tons and tons of information because why? You're going against the word of God. Anytime you go against him, you will guarantee. This is the one thing I can say guarantee. You're going to lose. Why? You're going against God. Why? You think you're better than God. Why? You think you know more than God. Why? You think you are God. And what does God do? Well, God has to show you you're not that. And just if you, just start out with five minutes, Victor. Sit down quietly by yourself and do your own meditation or talking to God, talking to yourself and understanding the reality of life. What is it? Okay, I got to put this away. I can't do this. I have to go to work. I have, We have responsibility, obligation. You have that gift God has given you. Go ahead. Like you said, if you think you're a writer, you're don't listen to anybody else and go, ah, oh, you can't do that. Do it. If you have to go to school, if you have to go get, get online, if you have to read a book, educate yourself. But but take five minutes to start out with and go, God, give me the message. What should I do? And you know what to do. It's inside your instinct. And you know, the beauty about Joe is that he's constantly evolving. Ladies, again, you know, this is the type of man you should be looking for is Joe. Ooh, more, Victor, more. Come yeah, on, come Joe, on. yes. The reason why I say that is because... <laughs> Joe is constantly wanting to learn to become a better version of himself. Uh, and God is not going to give you a man like Joe because Joe is working to become a better version of himself and you decide to stay idle like yourself. Well, guess what? You're not worthy of Joe because why? You're not at Joe level. You're 300. Your square is 300. That's where you are at 300. Joe's at 850. God says, I'm not going to punish Joe by giving him you. You didn't work on your credit score. Well, that's what Victor's saying. Victor, get off of me. Ah, we do, we, do, we but all again, have to work on ourselves. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you are the example. Well, you see the problems I have, too. And I'm I still know. Working on that. Yeah, you know. but that's the point I'm making. You're right. working on it. Right. You, you know, acknowledge exactly. it. We you acknowledge to. it, and yeah. you're working yeah. on it. That's the beauty. Yeah. You're yeah. not denying it. Right. You're not denying it. You said it's true. I got to work on this. And that's the beauty. That's what God wants to hear. You're acknowledging your flaw. And you're working on it. If a person is in denial, I cannot help you. Nobody can help anybody. Right. No, in you can't be in denial. Right. If you're in denial, you can't never, you'll never get help. There's, even God can't help you because you're in denial. And God wants nothing to do with you. You see? So again, if you are in denial, but Joe's not in denial, he realizes, yeah. And also, as well, I do the same thing as well. You're right, Joe. If like when Joe said say things, I say, oh, that is true, Joe. Because not because I say it's true, because the Torah says it's true. Torah says it's true. And Joe will tell you that I don't give opinion. Joe will tell you I don't have an opinion. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't because why? I don't want my opinion because my opinion is going to lead me to death. Mm. My logic going to lead me to death. My logic going to lead me to do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, and destroy me. And I don't want that. So I just go with what God says. Why? That's what he says. Guess what? He's the creator. He's the designer. He's the architect. He knows me. I don't know me. And the only way I can know me is by learning about God so I can learn who I am. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not learning about God, you'll never know who you are or know yourself. That's true. Right. You think you right. know yourself. Right. Again, that's the stupidity. The stupidity is you're thinking you know. Who are you? Who are you? When the IRS come around, you're scared. Mm -hmm. When the government come around, you're scared. When your car breaks down, you're scared. When you lose your job, you're scared. You don't know what to do. 
You can't even fish those Because you broke the rules. Yeah. So who are you? You're afraid of these people. But yet, you're not afraid of God. You think you know more than God. Who are you? Who are you to think you know more than God? Who are you to think that you can give God advice how to fix things? You can't even fix your own problems. But yet, you think God should have done this right, this wrong, or God did this. Who are you? Obviously, if you're in this place today, it shows you don't know what you're talking about. Like me. I did not know. That's why mm -hmm. I have no more opinion. My opinion, I told God, rip my opinion out, kill it, destroy it, burn it, do whatever you want. I don't want it. Why? Because who am I? I'm nothing but a normal person who's trying to do better with my life, and I can leave a legacy behind for my children so my children can be proud of me. I can teach my children through my examples. And God has given us passion. Work on that passion. Yes. Whatever you're, again, there are gifts, God, and you know the gifts God given you. I mean, again, it might be writing, it might, whatever it is, creating this, art, music. God has given us a gift. It could be architect, it could be uh, accounting, it could be painting, uh, construction. That was my gift, I guess. I love working in construction. I mean, you have to find your gift, and God has given us, and go out and do it. He's might have given us more than one gift. And remember, why you're here is to fear God and to become a better version of who you are. Meaning that you have an obligation to learn about God so you know who you are. If you don't know God, I prom well, I don't want to say promise. I'm not God. I'm not going to promise you. But you're not going to know who God is because that's why he gave us the Torah, the Bible. He said, I'm giving you this instruction how to live here. To know who you are, to know your purpose of this creation, why you're here. You have flaws. These, this is how to fix those flaws. You want peace? It can never be if you don't have the instruction to fix yourself. You know, and Victor's saying, I mean, I, as far as fear, if you follow the Ten Commandments and follow God, for me, there's no fear. God loves you, and you should love God. There should be love in there. But Victor's right. If you step behind the line as far as breaking or uh, listening to the devil, not following the Ten Commandments, not following God, then you should be in fear. Because at the end of your life, there's only going to be one thing left for every single one of us. Regret. regret. How many of you want regret? How many of you wants to die? And you know you cannot fix what you should have fixed when you're How many times you say, oh, I could have did this. Yes. I should have done that. Mm -hmm. And there's very, very many reasons why we get distracted. But usually it's about the money. It's about greed. It's about something else that we don't have. And regrets will make us feel miserable toward the end of our lives because we went with what our logic, our feeling we thought or dictate for us to do because we thought we were doing the right thing when we were the whole time we were living a lie, a lie. Because regret means I live a lie. My life was a lie. That's why I regret. I did the wrong things. I did not know what I was doing. I hurted someone I love. I, I didn't get married to the right person. I didn't treat that person right. I did something that I'm, I can't fix. But it's easy to repent. You can fix it. You can repent. That's true. Ask God for mm -hmm. forgiveness. Forgive yourself and get on the right path. Yes. You can yes. forget about that. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you, you still, oh, I, you know, I should have, why didn't I, you know, especially when our parents died. Mm -hmm. Don't we always say, oh, I should have, you know, whatever. Yes. Hugs, hugs you know, get Tell your parents, yeah, yeah, I love you or whatever. We That's one of our biggest regrets. Yes, is that where we show, did we show more love toward our parents when they were alive? And it's not until they're gone, we realize I should have loved them more. And you realize, like, you know, we said, you don't know what you had until you lost right. it. Right. And then not just parents, but that's... Relationship. I mean, relationship. Yes. Your children, your friends. You yes. Know. Everyone. And, that, and Joe will tell you, I treat everybody with respect. I give everybody, allow people to say what they want to say because everybody have their opinion. But the bottom line, you can have all the opinion you want. But there's only one truth, and that truth is God. There you go. You like it or not. And Amen. Again, I thank all of you for joining us. And again, share this. Remember, even though you're going through these videos, go back and relearn and relearn because it's going to take time for me to know this. It took me many, many, it does many take, years. Yeah. It's not going to happen one overnight. One step at a time. Yeah. Think about a 
a, a crossword puzzle? How long is it going to take you if it's a thousand pieces? How long would it take you to put that puzzle together? You see, it takes time to put that puzzle together. And that's what the Torah is. The Torah is a huge puzzle. And slowly but, slowly but surely, we're putting it together so we know what the picture is. All of our life. All of our lives. Again, I thank you for um, joining us and sharing this video. In the right comments, again, all of this is for you. It's not for us. For you to have a better life with your spouse, with your husband, and with your children and your friends. God bless. Which bell? That's the one. You like this one? I love that one. It's loud, it's clear. Ring, Ring that bell, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll see you next Ring time. Ring Victor. Very good. Very good. All right.